G'day guys, welcome back to my channel, my name is Wildcard. Thank you for being here and giving me the pleasure and privilege to entertain you as we talk about the greatest sport that we all love, rugby. Now, it is Tuesday, which means it's time to read the news. Last week in the world of rugby, rugby championship round six, record breaking week for the Wallabies once again, as they have fallen to a new record low uh, of ninth in the Rugby World Rankings, following their record-breaking low the week before, uh, down to 8th, they follow again to 9th. Argentina has also fallen from 6th to 8th, uh, while Scotland and Wales moves up in the rankings for not playing. Really, really good strategy, actually. Not playing will retain your spot in the Rugby World Rankings. So, with that being said, uh, before we move, look back to the negativity, to the fake news, to... To the controversy, let's look forward first. The mighty Springboks has announced their team for this weekend against uh, Argentina. There has been a few injuries. There has been a few changes in the squad. So Springboks uh, has trimmed five players from the squad because obviously they don't need them anymore. This is the final game coming up. And also have caught up two players to replace uh, current injuries. So Subu and Kosi gets called back to the Springboks squad since uh, I think Rugby Championship last year I don't think he was in November Test Series he was um, so basically yeah since the Rugby Championship last year it's almost a year since Subu Nkusi played for the Springboks again and Curly Arensa also returns to Springboks for Fold following his match following his ban for taking out Bowden Barrett in the second test first test First test against the All Blacks. So that's the call out for the Springboks. Obviously, uh, a few players have been left out the squad following last weekend. Alra Lowe, Joseph Durba, Warwick Lant, and Samar Morat, uh, alongside Damian Valenza, has all been released from the squad. Uh, Damian Valenza obviously has been released due to concussions, whereas the other players were released due to um, not long, no longer leaded off their service. Uh, as a result, a Pretty big changes for the Springbok team once again this weekend. Uh, the biggest thing that's talked about this weekend is obviously the 10. Who's going to be 10? Uh, Springbok has opted for the veteran that fielding last week. Francois Stey uh, coming in at a number 10 jersey. And also the Springbok has gone back to the bomb squad with six forwards on the bench and two back backline reserves on the bench as well. So let's have a look at the squad from 15 to, uh, to 1 for the Springbok. First up. Let's make this a bit bigger, right? So we can all read the names together. So first up, we have Vili LaRue at number 15. Kane and Moody, uh, despite they just caught in Subu Nkusi and Curly Alensa, Kane and Moody seems to have impressed the management the most. Retains that number 14 jersey under pretty heavy competition for that spot. Um, so he's retains the number 14 jersey again for the Springboks. Jesse Krill retains the number 13. Damien Dialendi stays the number 12. Marco Zulo Mapimpi gets the number 11 jersey once again for the weekend. Uh, as we mentioned, Francois Stey, after coming off for, for Damien Valimsa last week, retains that number 10 jersey. Uh, now it's Francois Stey has played 10 for the Cheetahs before. I don't believe he's played for the 10 jersey at uh, at for the Springboks before. I know he's played pretty much every other position in the back line for the Springboks, but I don't believe I can remember him playing for the Springboks. Uh, let me know if that's that's true or not, but the report is that he has played for the Cheetahs, so he will be okay at number 10. Jaden Hendricks gets number 9 jersey uh, once again for the Springboks. Uh, a number 8 in 4-pack, Yasma Visa gets that number 8 jersey, showing that the management, once again, is going to be favoring potentially that kicking game. He's the guy under the high ball for the box kicks. Uh, Peter said the toit actually returns from a slight knee injury, gets that number 7 jersey uh, for this weekend. Sia Khaleesi retains the captaincy at number 6. Lud Diaha comes back in at number 5. Alongside of him, uh, the best lock in the world, Eben Etzebeth, uh, gets number 4 jersey. In the front rowers, Franz Malherbe, number three. Malcolm Marks, for the third week in a row, gets the start on number two jersey. And number one, also for the third week in a, in a row, Steven Kitsov uh, gets that loose head starting position for the Springboks. Uh, on the bench, has been quite a bit of changes for the Springboks, addressing a couple of issues that kind of trickled over from last week. So first up, the return of Bungi Bunabi. So the 
Uh, Dion Fury is no longer needed for the reserve position. Bungi Bunabi gets caught in for the spring box at a number 16 jersey. At number 17, Ox Nche gets that number 17 jersey in the loose air position from the bench. At number 18, Trevor Nyakani gets dropped uh, in place for Vincent Koch. Uh, Vincent, I don't think he had an injury. He just has been left out of the selections for, for a couple of weeks. Uh, but he is back in the fold at the number 18 jersey. Last week, the reserve scrum wasn't that great for the spring box. This is uh, a change for the spring box to try to potentially address that issue. At number 19, Franco Mostert gets moved down for the number 7 jersey. At number 20, the veteran Dwayne, the Rock Vermeulen, comes back at number 20 jersey. And Albertus Smith, aka Huaga Smith, gets the number 21 jersey. And Francois de Klerk gets that number reserve number 9 jersey at 22. And Kurt Lee Arensa gets the number 23 jersey after returning from match ban. Uh, so Francois de Klerk also had talked about that he's potentially gonna he, he will be um the reserve number 10. So Faf de Klerk will be the reserve number 10 should, you know, Francois Stein pull his hamstring or something. Who knows? He will be the reserve at 10. And uh, Curdy Alensa obviously will be reserving for the remainder of the back line. Yeah, really, really interesting stuff uh, for the Springboks setup for the weekend. Uh, now, next up, obviously, this is like the hallmark of fake news or fake news. So apparently... There are some speculations of drug abuse in the Springbok camp, uh, in particular, Coke that is being the accused. And this is, you know, if you read this, this is like at all the hallmarks of fake news, right? An unnamed online media outlet reported on Saturday that on Sunday, a major newspaper called The Report in South Africa, I'm pretty sure it's a pretty newspaper to report, uh, you can let me know. I think the only other newspaper is like the South African, maybe bigger, but let me know if the report's a big paper or not, but I've, I've read it before. The report essentially was gonna come out and release an article uh, about several Springboks testing positive to Coke. Now, this is the hallmark of fake news, uh, online saying something that might happen tomorrow, this got fake news written over it. Uh, obviously, the Springbok management came out and really clamped down on this. Uh, there was some alleged, you know, deal being done by the management to stop the release of the report. And apparently, players were being contacted to react to the report. And man, this is just, you know, it has left the Springboks a little bit of a bit of a media, media, um, media, you know, um, yeah, media. A nightmare for the team to manage but I mean if you ask this is probably like the most you know one of the things that the players were talking about is literally they get tested three times a week for drugs and this not even yeah for, for a professional athlete on tour is very very unlikely that you know a lot of these players will be tested positive for drug especially in in the modern day uh next up there are some talks of Springboks uh, moving overseas, so sorry, Springboks moving clubs, I guess. Malcolm Marx is already overseas. He's currently playing for the Japanese team, Shining Ox, and there's some talks that at the end of his season with the Japan, he's being potentially moved to ASM Clermont in France. So there's some talks of Malcolm Marx shifting to France uh, following his season. Now the big one. Uh, let's turn off the news. Uh, sorry, let's turn off the music because we're gonna get serious here. And let's. So there's some video footage that's been released of the Spider Cam drone of the Wallabies versus All Blacks Bledisloe Cup game. The conversation between the referee and Bernard Foley in that last uh, decision where the referee reversed the uh, a penalty to a uh, a Wallabies penalty to a All Black scrum for time wasting. For the, this is literally like the first time ever. Uh, a team has been panel a revert a penalty has been reversed for time wasting. So, uh, so the exact conversations came out. So we're just gonna have a quick have a look at it, and then I'll break down some of those key areas that I think are really important, and a lot of people have probably not looked at. So let's just have a look at this. So the referee gives a penalty, and just listen up what they have to say, right? Let's just start again because I think the sound might be a bit low. Back on the ground. Here we go. Player goes out of the mall, then there is a contest. 
On his feet, fine. Yeah, play on, please. We play. We play. Time off. Okay. We play. We play. No, no. I, I will swi switch on the time. Okay. And we play now. Time on. 10. Okay. So. So, there were, so that's the, that's the you know, it's pretty obvious from the, what, what we see here. The referee is very clear. He told Foley he needs to go. And Foley was hesitant. And then he reverses the penalty. It's pretty clear, light, light and day. A uh, couple of things to consider before, you know, here is that it's really loud in the stadium. So obviously the referee is wearing a microphone. It's really for easy for us to hear what the referee is talking about. But on the field, it might be really difficult for the players to hear what the referee has to say. So a couple of things that... Um, I think we need to consider and here, right? So obviously the referee gives a penalty. Let's just mute the sound so you know you can hear my my breakdown of what kind of happened, what some of the things that we, 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 we took this referee. So the forwards are kind of you can see the world before was kind of deciding what to do here. Nick White goes up the referee. Referee says Nick, you gotta play, and Nick's like, all right, okay, okay, we're gonna play. So he puts the ball down uh, for. Foley, so, so the referee double blows the whistle here and tells Foley that, um, tells Foley that you got to play. And Foley, so, so when he double blows the whistle, it's kind of, this a, this a really important area here. When he double blows the whistle, he's starting talking to, so, so when he blows the whistle, the forwards has heard the whistle, Nick Y has heard the whistle, they get into a huddle, right? And the referee uns, re, restarts the game, but when he restarted the game, the four pack did not hear him. That is really important, right? So we can see here the four pack heard the referee say "time off," so they get into a huddle. A referee is having a private conversation with Foley and tells him to play on, right? So he says "time on." Foley gets ready to take the kick and he looks back. He sees his forward in the huddle, and Foley is like, "Guys, guys, we gotta go, guys, guys." And the referee sees the, is telling Foley to go, 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 go. And then referee deemed it time wasting for not kicking the ball. Now a lot of you guys were saying, "Oh, this is a foul! It's a foul!" Clearly, the referee told him to kick, and he's just trying to waste more time. There's a really important thing that we have to consider here: the wall of his four pack is currently in the huddle. Uh, the ball is live, despite even though the wall of his has a penalty, the ball is live. So if for some reason Bernard Foley fails to find touch, we see this a lot. We see this a lot. Like you know, teams. Especially when it comes to the last few minutes of the game, uh, the, the kicker gets nervous, gets pressured, and he fails to find touch. In the event that Foley fails to find touch, his forwards needs to be in position to chase this ball down or to defend. And that's what the Foley is con uh, concerned about. That is why Foley is sitting there going, guys, guys, get out of the huddle, get out of the huddle. Look, he's just looking back, the guys. Guys, get out of the huddle. It's really important to him to have his forwards ready. Uh, but his forwards did not realize that the referee had started a time because they heard him say time out and they all walked into the huddle. Uh, referee privately told Foley it's time back on. And Foley, realizing this, is trying to tell his forwards to carry on to cover the kick. Thus, we have this situation where the referee feels like he's giving clear indication to uh, to both Nick White and Bernard Foley that they need to take the kick, but Foley is having issues communi transferring that information to his forwards. So that is what I think happened. Uh, I do think, as a professional referee, we see this a lot. It, it, it very like this happens a lot with teams trying to run the clock down in the last couple of minutes whilst trying to hold on to a small lead. This happens every game almost in the Six Nations. And the referee would, uh, would just pause the clock for the Six Nations. Yeah, pretty standard. You pause the clock, kick the ball out, set up, get line out set, and then you start a clock. So then no time is wasted. Uh, but for some reason, Matthew Renault felt like, hey, uh, it's up to him. 
to decide on the result. Uh, it's up to him to make an example how important that he that, that he is, and uh, to to uh, to issue a, to issue a penalty. So yeah, uh, I, it is unprecedented. No, no no referee has done this before in a major test match, and yeah, that is uh, that is the issue. That, that the issue is quite precisely uh, the communication is difficult on the field, and yeah. Uh, it's 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 really unfortunate, really really um, uh, really bad. So obviously, uh, Foley came out. Even he said he wasn't sure that the time has started. Uh, he basically said he wasn't trying to stop slow it down. Uh, his talk is he's conscious about the next line out, and you know it's very loud in the stadium. And uh, he he wasn't sure that the, yeah he he wasn't sure that the referee had started the clock. And uh, it's really clear for us because, like I said, the referee has a microphone. But it's it's you know it's it's really unfortunate that this had happened. So after the game as well, the two uh, the captain Nick White had a conversation with the referee. The referee basically says, you know, uh, you know, he said, you know, the, the Nick White is not happy saying that the referee has cost him the championship. The referee says, I'm sorry, and then had a bit of an argument with him. And he basically says. You know, you're the captain. I told you, and you're ten. Uh, he said he he basically warned that he said he's he, he told Nick he's warned the ten. If you don't play midi, I will give the scrum. Uh, so basically, he's saying you run the clock down. It's not fair, and uh, and he and this is the key part. He said if you think I'm not capable to give a scrum and turn over, you make a mistake. So now you know it. So it's really, really like, you know, one of the things where the referee is saying you want to, yeah, the referee is basically putting his ego ahead of the game um, just based on the conversation he's had with Nick after the game. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, and obviously, everyone's come out. The coach, Dave Rooney, uh, had an interview after the match. He's basically saying he has never seen a decision like that at any level. Uh, it is in the rule book, but this um, this it's never been administered even in a in a test match like this. Uh, it is you know extremely disappointing for the Wallabies. They were down thirteen players and come back to you know to finally put themselves ahead for something like this to ruin the game. Uh, it's pretty understandable that everybody is upset. Uh, for obviously the this has to go to you know. Everybody has an opinion. So the I guess the best referee in the world that's retired, Nigel Owens, has come out to take on the controversial um, decision. So Nigel Owens pretty clear that the referee has given clear communication that the player will be penalized if he keeps wasting time. And the players failed to adapt to the referee's instructions. And therefore, uh, it was completely fair for the referee to reverse the penalty uh, because that is basically what the law book says. Uh, it's going to happen and what the, what the referee should do. Uh, so for, for Nigel Owens, he kind of mentioned one of the key points kind of mentioned that uh, I thought is quite important is that, you know, it's, it's uh, the learning here is not for the referee, but the players to get on with it when the referee asks. Yeah. So that is, you know, some of the things that we get taught as child when we play in, in, in schools that, you know, if a referee says something, you just do it. You don't argue uh, because arguing will just get you penalized. So that's basically the same logic for Nigel Owens. And uh, yeah, uh, also there was uh, obviously following this incident, everybody's not happy for, for I guess, the, uh, for, uh, you know, five days later following the incident, Rugby Australia has officially written to... Rugby, uh, will rugby, to, to, uh, to talk to 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 get clarifications on what's called the overbearing officials. So rugby Australia has taken a step to to seek answers from will rugby, but in their application to in their you know what do you call it? Not application, in the formal written uh, uh in the in formal re written report. They are not specifically talking about the referee's decision by Matt Ren on the weekend, but more to do about the state of the game and how the referee 
is, you know, uh, it's kind of overrunning the game a bit and the, the referee is becoming, you know, too much of an involvement in the game. He's basically more to do with that instead of trying to target a specific incident of the referee uh, during the Bledisloe Cup game. Uh, next up, uh, obviously, Sir Fozzy is extremely happy following the win of the Bledisloe Cup. Obviously, his job was on the line. If he didn't win this one, he could be gone uh, before the weekend. So, obviously, Ian Foster came out and said it was very clear cut. And they were delaying the kick. And uh, they got warned. So, deservingly, the uh, All Blacks should have gotten the reverse penalty as he should be. Basically, yeah. Foster has uh, taken that quite clear stance. And uh, also, the following... Uh, the, the week, the days followed. Foster continued to back the idea that uh, the game needs to speed up. So the New Zealand media, as well as the New Zealand rugby, has been trying to do this a bit, pressuring for faster game, fewer pauses, fewer stoppage, uh, fewer time wasting, especially when it comes to like you know uh, injury breaks and so on. Uh, so he's basically came out again during the week and said that hey, uh, we've been driving to. Uh, we've been trying to drive that message all year, to be fair. With how teams slow things down. Uh, you know, he talks about there's some introduction to uh, scrum resets. And, there, you know, there's, there's basically talks of, you know, have a scrum clock. And also, he talks about uh, there's clear delays in terms of going to the lineouts. And maybe that's another area we could improve uh, as a game. So overall, Fonzie is kind of saying... Hey, this is good. This is good for rugby. We're going to speed up the game. And uh, less breakage. And uh, and he basically, yeah, no, you know, full support for what Matthew Reynolds has done on the weekend. Uh, for the All Blacks story following that game, there is a couple of head injuries. So Sam Can had a head clash with his own teammate. Um, David Havili. So they both got red carded. No, just kidding. They both got taken off for HRA. Uh, obviously, you can't get a red card for kick colliding with your own teammates. Wouldn't that be funny? So, the, both of them are still trying to pass HRA assessments. But Sam Cam was reportedly at training this week and has been, you know, left training early uh, for, for whatever reason. So, he didn't quite complete the full training session. Uh, this big return for the All Blacks. Adi Savir has returned to training camp following a week off due to his, um, you know, his a, a, a new child coming to the world. And uh, so for the Wallabies this weekend, uh, there's still mathematically probable for the Wallabies to win the Rugby Championship if they could beat the All Blacks by 68 points or more at Eden Park. Yeah, so it's not, it's, you know, mathematically probable, but, you know, in, the, in reality, it's uh, basically an impossible achieve, achievement for the Wallabies. But should the Wallabies be able to keep the All Blacks uh, March like out of a bonus point win for instance, uh, the all and the Springboks could potentially get a bonus point against Argentina. Then the Springboks could potentially come out as the champions for the rugby championship of 2022. Uh, so obviously Darcy Swain is the other person that is under the scrutiny of the game. He was cited for basically uh, hurting Quinn Tupaya on the leg. Tupaya has suffered a leg injury. He went into the clean out and just ran the shoulder into Tupaya's leg sideways and folded his leg in. It was pretty brutal. Uh, got He got a yellow card for the incident. So obviously, he, you know, it's reported that he was uh, very devastated for Quinn Tupaya for doing the injury. He felt very guilty, very bad. But he's been cited. The judiciary has to decide on his fate. But yeah, that was a pretty horrendous, um, you know, moment in the rugby. You know, it's really hard to say what's going to happen to him whether or not the judiciary is going to rule that's intentional or not, uh, we have to wait and see. But yeah, Darcy Swain is uh, waiting for uh, for judiciary hearing. So Nigel Owens also has a take on this incident. He basically came out and said that um, he thought this could be a red card. Yeah, he felt like this was a rec reckless play and, it's, and the World Rugby has come out and, you know, made it, made this an area that needs to be looked at, you know, tacking of the lower legs uh, in, in the rock. So it's something that the World Rugby has 
um, notify the referee to look out for. So this could warrant a red card in in um, Nigel Owens' case. And, uh, you know, he, he thinks that yellow card is... He can also understand why the yellow card was issued. But he thinks that, um, yeah, given given the situation, the the outcome, he thinks that, um, yeah, he, he thinks that you know it, it's 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 potentially a red card infringement. So, yeah, we have to see if uh, Dusty Swan gets extended match ban. So for the All Blacks, obviously, everybody's abandoning ship uh, under the tutelage of Sir Fozzy. There's quite a few players with their, um, you know, with their uh, uh, contract due at the end of the Rugby World Cup in 2023. So Aaron Smith, Brody Retallick, Nipple Laulala, Bowden Barrett, um, Sam Wylock, and Richie Mwonga have all of all of these players have their contract to with New Zealand Rugby ending in 2023. Richie Mwonga has talked about wanting to go overseas for a bit, uh, particularly to Japan. So so the latest reports are saying that uh, Nippo Laulala is looking at getting a place to um, to to France at Bordeaux to potentially replace Charlie Fao Mui, Muina, uh, yeah, at Toulon, and also Toulouse, also the big name, Bowden Barrett, there's some speculations that he's potentially looking at Racing 92 in France uh, following the Rugby World Cup in 2023. So Bowden Barrett leaving, it's going to be a huge loss, not just to the All Blacks, but to Super Rugby uh, as, you know, uh, to the quality of Super Rugby as a product. I'm a big fan watching Bowden play. And uh, yeah, if Bowden isn't playing, I just, yeah, you know, it's, it's a big, big, big bummer for me to watch the Kiwis play without Bowden Barrett, to be honest. It's going to be really painful. And um, hopefully, hopefully, New Zealand Rugby can take some of the money out of the Silver Lake deal and give it to Bowden and keep him in uh, in New Zealand and keep him in Super Rugby, you know. Uh, but it's not really up to me. Sometimes this player wants to wants to find a different, different, you know, different, different, you know, different city to live in and uh, get, change the life a little bit. You know, it's, uh, it is what it is. But hopefully, Bowden gets to stay in New Zealand. Uh, I was also reported that the Super Round, this is just blows my mind. Uh, the Super Round is, for next year, it's going to be in Melbourne, again, after the catastrophe that was in Melbourne, uh, this year, they're going to go back to Melbourne again. Uh, and um, this will be on the March 3rd. Uh, I, I honestly don't understand. Like, there was so much talks about this Super Round being moved around the country. Go to different cities. Go to New Zealand maybe this year. But it's going to be Melbourne again. It's going to be another empty stadium. Three day. Uh, you know, whatever. Whatever, man. I, I don't even understand. Uh, next up, Jake White, uh, the former World Cup winning Springbok head coach, has well, you know, he's signed an extension with the Bulls. Uh, he has been the head coach for the Bulls since 2020. Uh, he has signed an extension till 2027. Uh, he, he's one of the smartest minds in rugby these days, and uh, we can see he, he, he's definitely contributing to bringing up some of the new talents for the Springboks as well. You know. It's, uh, coming up with a strategy to be Leinster in Leinster to, uh, you know, as the underdogs for the Bulls is quite an achievement for, yeah, for, for any coach. So, yeah, Jake White gets to retain uh, his position at the Bulls. Uh, he's a very outspeaking guy about, you know, having domestic players given the opportunities exclusively for the Springboks and, you know, cut the international players out of the team. So, yeah, so he's one of the guys who wants to, you know, Go back to the days when you had to be playing domestically, domestically to be qualified for the Springboks, and uh, yeah, he's uh, he's a very you know smart, and he gets to stay and continues to influence the future of South African rugby. Uh, finally, Elton Yangshi's 
saga continues. So he's released a statement, uh, basically saying that the obviously denies the allegation, saying that it was not true. Uh, he basically said that at no point was the trainer, what's her name, um, Zanat Simji was in his room. And basically, yeah, he's saying that it's fake news. Uh, to be honest, if, if I was to read the news, the, if you go to read some of the news reports, it did sound like it was fake news because it was based on, like, guests at the hotel room, like, next door eardropping on Yanshi's room next door. So, just based on that, it's already sounding like fake news. Uh, it's really unfortunate that the player and the, the dietitian had to send home because of this, but yeah. Uh, also, the dietitian herself has come out and stated that um, the the weekend ahead of the test match in Mumbella, the this is the dietitian by the way, um, the the girl, she basically said uh, she has been with her parents dealing with family uh, issues. So the allegations of her spending time with the Yanshis at the guest house is absolutely. Fake news and false. So yeah, she wasn't even there uh, at this uh, at Imumbella. So there was just yeah, there's you know sometimes just based on some of the news which came out before, like the Springboks player um, on the alleg allegation of coke. Yeah, there's a lot of clickbait fake news that's came out. And to say to see that the team, if if this is actually untrue, to see that the team has to drop the a player and drop a tight dietitian. In the middle of the championship, uh, because of fake news, uh, you know this this needs to be you know probably looked at by the Springbok management and uh, probably find a different way to manage these things in the future. Because you can't just imagine at the Rugby World Cup, right? Our uh, news comes out and say, hey, uh, you know, someone released a video and, and accuses that Razzy Rasmus released it or something, and they're gonna try ban him again, or maybe you know another player's having an affair on in in, uh, in France on tour. And suddenly the player has been sent home, and suddenly the 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 the, the spring box is, is 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 you know missing out a chance to win the rugby world cup because of fake news. So yeah, this is uh pretty horrendous in my opinion. That uh, to think I, I have no doubt you know Yang Shi's he might lie, he might say all sorts of things, but the statement from the dietitian sounds pretty genuine to me that she spent time with her family, uh her parents. So I'm sure her parents would not would not be lying um to you know if she says she was spending time with her friends then you can be like uh but her parents that's a pretty credible um source of people that can back her up on this issue and i'm sure her parents would not be able to yeah her parents are not going to tarnish their own rep family's reputation to, to 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 cover up for her um yeah to bringing her fan for, for parents name in this matter it shows me that she's genuine that she was not anywhere anything he she didn't have anything involvement with uh elton yanchis so yeah that's the news for the week guys let me know your thoughts let me know um yeah let me know anything let me know your thoughts about the springbok team let me know your thoughts about uh the wallabies penalty issues let me know your thoughts on fake news surrounding the springbok rugby thank you for watching this video like comment and subscribe i'll see you guys be later this week for the previews have a good week cheers